Hi everybody, welcome back to Enjoying Retirement. Today we're going to spend the day at the Clifton Heritage National Park in New Providence, the Bahamas. It's about a 25 minute ride outside of Nassau. Uh, primarily composed of two parts, one a historical and cultural area, and the other is an underwater sculpture uh, garden. Uh, and we're gonna start there, even though in actuality we did the historical part first, but for the purposes of the movie, we're gonna jump into the uh, cool visual stuff. So let's get on with it. After about a uh, oh, five, seven, eight minute walk down from the Welcome Center, that's where you pay and go in, you reach the hut on the beach, which is the snorkeling center. They have a good sign there that explains what the sculpture garden is and also some excellent new signs over there that describe how it's also a coral nursery and they describe what fish they're going to have there that you might see and uh, we, we saw pretty much all of those except for the crustaceans. I saw a grouper and a lot of yellowtail snapper. So many in fact uh, they're following me around and I tend to think they probably get fed out there. So don't be surprised if you have a, a bunch of fish following you around with uh, big eyeballs and open mouths. So there you are. Let's get to the beach. We'll take a look back, uh, kind of see what we have. It's a nice area, beautiful beach. Um, the day we were there was a day after uh, about a day and a half of really strong winds, so things were churned up a little bit, but it's looking good so far. Uh, so Let's get in the water. Uh, you talk to the local there, the guy uh, manning the, the shack, and he'll tell you how to get there. Basically, as you're facing the water, about 150 yards out on the right side is a big white buoy. That marks the location of Ocean Atlas. And once you get under, underwater, uh, just keep looking out for the buoy or follow those man-made uh, ball reefs that you see there, and they will guide you from one spot to another. Um, those are kind of cool, uh, and they are actually working. So we're gonna talk about the park a bit. It was protected in 2004 and opened to the public in 2009. In 2014, these sculptures were put in place. This young lady right here, they call Ocean Atlas. It's about 18 feet tall and about 15 feet under the surface of the water to her head. It's a takeoff of the Greek myth about Atlas who's holding up the world. Well, this is a young Bahamian uh, girl who is holding up the weight of the ocean and the responsibility of the ocean with her. It's made out of locally sourced pH neutral material and it is specifically designed to turn into a reef itself over time. And you can tell it's no longer pristine. Uh, things are growing on it. And that is exactly as it was intended. So here I'm taking a dive down there, get a little practice in. I uh, went down about 30 feet. Really enjoyed myself. And here, here's the view from my wife's camera. It is, it is so fun diving down there. The water was pretty clear. Like I said, when we first got in, it was murky uh, from the winds. But when, once we got out, oh, I don't know, 20 yards or so, it cleared up nicely. Maybe not as great as you're used to seeing in the Bahamas, but a whole lot better than almost anywhere else you're going to go. There's my wife diving down. And after the first one, she couldn't resist trying it again and trying to get a little bit better. So here she goes. Just, just a magnificent area. Here I am. I'm going to dive down. I'm going to take a look at the uh, uh, coral nursery. And here's where they have hanging up on PVC pipes a lot of, uh, I believe it's called staghorn coral. And it is actually growing. This is a little nursery. When it's uh, big enough, they will take it out and actually cement it to some rocks. And the coral will continue growing and replenish the uh, coral area. Another view of Ocean Atlas. Um, very cool. I do want to say there is a 65-year uh, age limit on being able to snorkel there. So this might be my one and only chance to go see it. Or... Who knows, if I go back in a couple years, perhaps I won't have aged. We're coming up to the second statue now. Again, just follow those man-made reef balls. This is called Virtuoso Man, and he is an eight-foot-tall sculpture. 
My wife really got into uh, diving there. She went all the way down, patted him on the head. And this guy is put in place. He is facing um, Ocean Atlas. Uh, the artist designed him as an elderly wise man who is passing on all his wisdom and wishes for good success to Ocean Atlas to take care of the oceans. Continue on the path. Remember, keep following those man-made uh, artificial reef balls. And you come up on this. That is a sunken airplane fuselage. Reportedly, it was used in the James Bond movie, Never Say Never Again. And I'm also told that it was uh, in the Jaws movie as well. So here I am, diving down to take a look at it. Again, from my wife's camera. And it, it is just such a pleasure diving down there. I didn't have enough weight on my weight belt to keep me neutrally buoyant at the bottom, so once I got down there, I tended to float up like a cork, but that's okay. And here we are. We're going to take it uh, from my view of the camera I was holding, and let's go take a peek inside this guy. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Well, if I could spend more time down there, I, th I think I could get my ear problems cleared up and I think I could uh, actually get into free diving. Uh, but such is not my lot at the moment. Carried on a little bit more, it came up and oh golly, we're in the middle of a rainstorm. That's okay. It was the only time it rained on our trip to the Bahamas and if you have to get rained on, well, what the heck, you might as well be in the ocean while it's happening. So now we're going to move on to the historical and cultural area. You go back to the Welcome Center and follow the path beyond there. The first stop is the Banana Hole. Um, this place was uh, originally inhabited, they believe, by peoples called the Lucayan back in about 1100 AD. And they seem to think that this area was held uh, sacred uh, to the Lucayan people. Uh, really think of it as a large sinkhole. Uh, the geography down there lends itself to some uh, underlying sediments being washed away and they will leave a very thin roof which can be dangerous. They're called banana holes because uh, the dirt that gets trapped in there apparently is really good for growing banana trees. All right, now we've moved on and we are up into about, I believe it's eight slave quarters. This was when this was a plantation, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But it was a plantation back in the late uh, 1700s, about 1787 to early 1800s. There were eight uh, buildings built for the married slaves. Um, this slave uh, owner was a English loyalist who fled here or moved here uh, after the Revolutionary War. And he came down and was granted um, some land holdings. And it's believed that he had about 67 slaves here in total. Uh, interesting thing is, they tried to grow cotton, but the land wasn't suitable for it. And bull weevils came in, and I'm told that after about 20 years, it just kind of fell apart. So he sold it. I believe he went back to England. And if, if the record that I read was true, I believe the slaves were freed and left uh, in the Bahamas. I, at least I hope that story was true. Nonetheless, they, they do a pretty good job. One of the buildings has a little recreation of what it might have been life in, inside um, this particular quarter. Two of them have been restored completely. This one with the wooden roof, and then we'll see the next one in a bit where they put a thatched roof on it. Now, I do want to say, if you go there, uh, a couple ways to get there. You can get there on your own. You'll pay about $27.50 to go snorkeling, and that gets you free access to uh, this area, too. But they also offer a tour where they will pick you up from your hotel uh, in Nassau bring you here, um, let you go snorkeling, and then give you a guided tour through this area. There are not a whole lot of signs here, so there's very limited information, uh, very little interpretation of what you're looking at. I would highly recommend going on a guided tour through this area. I think you could learn so much more. 
But my wife and I are a little bit stubborn, like to keep our own timetable. We weren't sure how much time we wanted to spend snorkeling. So we, we didn't uh, take the tour or catch the bus. We just came here on our own. When you're done with the slave quarters, move back to the uh, Welcome Center, cross the street, and now you're going to get to the Great House. Uh, it's believed that this was built, I believe, in 1787, styled after plantation houses in South Carolina and Louisiana at the time. And um, this house was destroyed by fire in the 1850s and the walls caved in. So, moving on. Now we're going to cross the street, go back, walk through the parking lot, and we are going to the final area of the Heritage uh, Center. But first, stop and take a look at the view of Clifton Bay. Stunning. I mean, it's like the Bahamas. The whole thing is just stunning. And now we are coming up on a uh, statue area. It's called Genesis, but the locals will just tell you it's called Sacred Place. Um, the artist carved these figures of slave women uh, out of local trees that had been destroyed by a hurricane. And it is to symbolize women looking towards Africa and longing for home. Well, we had a great time there. Perhaps a once in a lifetime visit for us. A little bit out of the way, but worth it. Hey, thank you for watching. As always, I am enjoying retirement.